TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, if you missed the live recording and you, I mean, if you listen live and you want to watch it, just, you know, slide to twitch.com, type this in down there. And, you know, do your thing. Uh, we got Patreon and we got uh, merch as well, man. The link to those are down in the description below, man. Let's get into this, man. This is season four, episode 11 of Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away. Recent research shows that young people between the ages of 18 and 25 are facing 10 years of debt, with student loans and mortgages being the major factor. Almost 50% say that they lose sleep over the state of their personal finances, with many too scared to check their bank balance. Delroy Anglin and his son Dale are High Court Enforcement Agents. <laughs> yeah, they got the same resting face. They both in the car like, that's tough. They travel hundreds of miles each week, recovering Salute, debts got and seizing son. goods. Today they're in Lee, South East London, with a writ for over £3,500 owed to a van rental company. All right, Dale, what have we got? Got a Mr. Muhammad Abil out. They both named Dill? Is that, is that what I. He owes the money to a Ace Renter Van Limited. We're coming for the amount of £3,507.89. It's a lot of money for running a van. Got me damage on a van. If Mr. Tarafter can't or won't pay today, the agents have the power to seize goods to the value of the debt. But this case will be one of the toughest Delroy and Dale have ever faced. Why? The toughest Delroy and Dell. <laughs> Salute. Good morning. My name's Dale Anglin, High Court Enforcement Agent. Look for Mr. Muhammad Bila Tarafta. About what? I'm, I have to speak to him. Is, yeah, that, just, is, that, is, that, is that you? Yeah. It's regarding money's owed to our Ace Renter Van Limited. Ace? Yeah. I've never heard of Ace. You've never heard of Ace Renter Van? Yeah, I've heard of them, but I only hired a van for one day. Right, well, they've taken you to court and issued a court order against yourself and you owe them. Mm, maybe somebody stole his identity and rented it in his name? In the amount of £3,507.89. I don't know what it's for. He's going to have to pull you back. Yeah. What well, Ace is charging me three thousand pounds for hiring 3, the van for one day? I don't know the details of it. Obviously, I only have the bill. I ain't got notified about that. The, all the letters have been sent the here. Van, so why am I supposed to pay for three thousand pounds? Is it for damage or something like that? I mean, there is no damage on the van. I don't know why you got coming in without all these. I don't know. I don't understand this, man. When dealing with debtors, in most cases, they turn around and say, "Don't know nothing about it, mate. Don't know about this debt. What you want about?" And so it goes on. I wouldn't be there unless the debt was owed and they wouldn't be named in a high court writ if they weren't responsible for that debt. Not necessarily, but yeah. Bilal claims that in the theory. van was safely returned to the rental company and that the debt is nothing to do with him. But the high court writ says otherwise. We got a high court writ to obviously come here to get the money off you. That's what. That's why we're here. We've been sending yeah, this to get the money. I haven't got the money for that. All right, I'm not going to pay money. for that unless I go to court. No worries. That's the only problem. You can go back to court and yeah. fight it, but obviously that's not going to stop action here today. With Bilal saying he won't pay, the agents only... His son is pretty good at this. Like, how, This is like the first time we ever seen his son. Like, they was training in the background or something. The option is to start looking for assets. Who's the vehicles in the drive? Oh, that's my dad's in there. Maybe we can get the logbooks and insurance from them. No, I ain't going to do that's not, that's not their... That's because it's not their thing. Who lives at the house with him? My dad in there. Is your dad here? I'm not going to get my family involved for that. It's not even well, my mistake. If Bilal can't prove the cars on the driveway belong to his father, they could be seized to offset the debt. Now we want to make sure, right, that none of these vehicles belong to you. We'll have to seize the vehicles until you show us. 
That's, that's how real... No, listen, 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 listen to me. I don't want to do it. That's what I'm saying. If you can show us... Hear me, hear me, listen to me. That's what I'm saying. If you can show us the paperwork, then we haven't got to go down that long route. Right. The writ commands that the agents look for any assets Bilal might own, which means they need to get inside the house. One, let one of us in. Okay. No. But then, Bilal's father appears in the hallway. You know what, sir? Oh, no, no, don't some ace fan. I've had a van for one day and he's charged me three and a half grand. What I'd like to do, with your permission, sir, is to come in. No, no, come in my house. <laughs> one of the, well... We, come in my house. I understand that, sir, but we want to be able to report back on your... You can report whatever you like. OK. <laughs> you can't tell me why. Oh, fine, OK. Who owns the vehicles on the drive? No worries, have you got the logbooks and the insurance? Why didn't you get the number plate and find out? Well, no, we just... No, right, well, just, just no, that's your duty. I'm it's not my duty. duty. We just want to... Anybody can come in my house. We ask, sir, we ask. Either hey. you talk to him to explain, or him with, then... We're obviously going to have to. We're going to have to dig about making inquiries in the vehicles. If he wants us to take the vehicles, no, no, don't he do that. then he's going to put my head. I thought to maybe anxious to not inform. <laughs> His dad was on business. Why is dad staying on ten toes? He was what? He said, "Man, I'm not getting my long book. Hey, number plate. Look it up. You find out. No, nobody come in my house. I feel it though. From their their family of their dad because it's embarrassing." For example, dad or mom may have previously bailed them out of a situation. Oh God, and I feel it. Here we are again, confronted with enforcement agents in your house over a debt that you haven't taken care of. Minutes later, Bilal's father comes back with his insurance documents. Oh, he came back with it. That's fine, that's the... Oh, one second. Take him and go. He's <laughs> a name driver on the... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a driver only, but does he own the car? No, I'll give you that. Stop. He's only a name driver. Okay, go on. Can you go, please? Please don't push me, sir. No, get out! Why are you going? Well, please don't get out. Uh, go. Push, push. Go. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold you're not the oh, authority here. I am. No, you're not. I am. Bounce off! I'm going to leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Go. Please, please don't. Do come. Don't listen, ever come in again in my door again. Come on, Baba. Listen, listen, listen. I'm telling you. Go. No, no, no. We're trying to keep it calm. Get out for me at my door. Please. Just get out. Please stop shouting. Okay? Please stop shouting. We'll get this sorted. You are breaking the law. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'll show you why I'm not. Look. Look, I don't give a Get out what of here. Why are you doing that? Hey, leave it. Leave it, Stop okay. it. No, no, no. Let me go. Oh, man. No, no, no. Why do you want to do that? There's no need for that. Come on, man. Listen, I was inside. It's only when he hit that. It's the only reason I'm in here. Unless you go out from here, it's going to be violent. I'll tell you, I'll guarantee that. So somebody's going to get hurt. Either me or you, Lord. Why are you being locked? Don't say Look, please, I'm going to say I'm going to say my house. house. We're not, listen, listen. This simple... Oh, yeah, man. Dad turned up. Debt recovery has turned into a dangerous situation I'll be mad too, though. for the agents. Listen, listen. Listen. Now! Solve it! Will Dell and Dale be able to keep tempers under control before the threats turn into real violence? High Court enforcement agents Delroy Anglin and his son Dale were in South East London to recover a debt of over three and a half thousand pounds owed to a van rental company. Looking for Mr. Mohammed Bilal Tarafta. About what? But the debtor Bilal claimed the writ had nothing to do with him. They bought the here. van, so why am I supposed to pay for three thousand pounds? He refused them access to the house. Let one of us in. No. no. And when his father got involved. The situation turns nasty. Get out! Why are you going? Oh, well, look, I don't give a buzz off! Get out of here! Why are you doing that? Hey, leave it, leave it, Stop okay, it, no, no. So somebody's gonna get hurt. Either me or you, look. Now, the agents must try and calm Bilal's father down and make him understand they have every right to be in the house. I call them this. Okay. Why? They have no right to come into my house. No, they have no right to come into my house. Just because of your size. You must, nothing to do with my size. Uh, you must, no, uh, you are intimidating me. We're going to wait for the police. You are, you are, you are forcing me. Dale tries to explain the situation to Bilal's younger brother, Abid. Is it your brother? Yeah, He's yeah, been yeah. there and watched it. I haven't done anything to your dad. No, you forced me no, to it. Your dad's the one that's hit me. No, I haven't you done forced anything. me. Lying bastard, you don't. Talking here, obviously, is just going to make everyone upset. We'll just wait for the police <laughs> and we'll get dealt with. This is an ongoing thing with this idiot, man. You know what I'm trying to say? That's why my dad's pissed off. 
it seems that Dell and Dale are caught in the crossfire of an ongoing feud between Bilal and his father. Why did you take him? I'm not here to take him. No, no, you, you had to take him. He's Why? a criminal. Who's making him a criminal? You are. Do you have a right to force him to my house? We didn't no, force him to arrest him. Yes, yes, you have forced him. No, we didn't force him. Yes, yes, you have. You know what, I'm not going to argue with you. Yes. You called the police, let them come, and then we can deal with it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. That's cool. A lot of communities in this country are tight family communities where everyone lives in one home. Debt is, is a big thing, and obviously it can cause a massive issue. I was just about to say, they deep. And unfortunately, obviously, we're the bearer of bad news, and I can understand why someone wouldn't want to bring their family into that. With Bilal's father now downstairs, Dell tries to break the stalemate. The easiest way around this thing, pay the money, we leave. Who's going to pay the money? Well, then not you, speak to your brother. I'm just... I but don't pay it then. You're saying, I'm not paying this. So really and truly, that attitude there is what's going to cause this, not me. Bilal still claims that he safely returned the van after one day and that Obviously he's not didn't. responsible for the debt. Something in this story doesn't make sense. So let me see if I can find out the other side of it. Dale calls the rental company. Good afternoon. And here's a very different version of events. Their side of the story is that you did hire the van for 24 hours, like you said. They had to come and pick it up, but not after 24 hours. And you didn't tell them where it was. They had to go and find it using their tracker. And it took them two weeks to do so. Two weeks? Two weeks before they got their van back. Dale now gives Bilal one last chance. Why would Bilal do that, though? Why would you do that? Just get them people their van back. Now you out $3,000. Like, that was stupid. Pay the debt or the agents will be forced to seize possessions. I want your brother to take responsibility and deal with this. Go speak to your brother, go to another room. I'll stand right here. You two guys obviously need to chat because he doesn't want to listen to us. I'm letting you go through my stuff. Yes, my I know. Stuff. I no understand. No, you don't understand, man. It's their fucking listen, right as a I'm freaking enforcement officer, man. Yeah, we'll Fuck wait right here. Bro. We won't walk round. We'll wait here. It's their right. fucking right, man. You right. can say whatever you want. It's their right. 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 Tempers are rising again. And then the boy getting cussed out by his little brother. Al's uncle decides to get involved. Are you one fighting? No. Huh? No. You want fighting? You no. tell me. No, we don't want huh? to fight. No. You tell me. No, 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 fighting. no. Not fighting. No, no, no. <laughs> Unk stood up and got no taller. No, we don't want to huh? fight. No. You tell me. No, 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 no. Not no. no fighting. No, 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 no. I'm ready. I'm sorry. No. I'm ready. We're not. No, oh, they are business. Like yes, that. they will. Nothing Please like that. Please go. Well. I can't go, leave here, go, sir. Go, go. You'll go out of Sir, there is no fight. What's going on? I haven't moved from here. I haven't moved from here. I don't know why he's upset. Who is it? I'm fight for Tony. I'm ready. I'm ready. Please, Sasai. Don't worry. Bilal's father reappears from downstairs. We're not, just, we're not. I know you're not doing nothing. I know you're not doing nothing. I know you're not doing nothing. Can you just stand there? Yeah, I will stand there. You just stand there. We're not going around the house. We're standing right here. Yeah, we're not going around the house. We're standing right here. We're not going around the house. We're standing right here. I'm going to go to prison. Then you all of you would be happy. Don't be stupid, man. Fucking stop him. Please, Abba. Just please stop him, man. Fucking no, bro. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Damn, this is stressful as it's real negative right here. I ain't like this this is a different type of negativity though. This like some family issues going on. Now am I laughing at it? Does that make me a bad person? <laughs> I mean Fuck you know, bro, you stupid man. Come on, crying, bro. Oh, but please, man. Fucking, fucking hell, bro. Look what you're doing, man. You like that son of a They're fucking right. You don't understand, bro. They're not gonna move. They're not gonna move unless they get the three and a half grand or four and a half grand of fucking worth of assets. 
Don't you understand? Sometimes it can be very shocking because sometimes this like out of a. This, I feel like I'm watching a hood movie. Everything's very flat, and then instantly it's like a light switched on, and everything just erupts. And we've got to try and control that in the safest way we can. The agents have now been in the <laughs> house for two hours. Abid decides to make them an offer. Well, can I give a deposit or something of two grand? Because I've only got about two grand on me. Can I give a deposit? No. That's more than enough. Look at, look at Delroy. <laughs> he, looked at, he looked at his son like, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get up out of here. Huh? Stop fucking me long, man. How much? Huh? It, it has to be the full amount. I know you're trying. You're trying. I can see that. Don't be like that, y'all. Come on. Y'all know y'all taking it too. Take the two and set up a payment plan. I'd rather help you with two. Yeah, yeah but even if it's a small thing, it's still, me. It's still me. Thing, isn't it? Come Listen. On. Look, at the end of the day, you're paying me back, not these fucking bricks. I know that. Listen. That's it. Right. I'd rather have that. You fucking pay me back, not these fucking bricks. They're going to take everything in the fucking toilet for me. No, 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 I understand. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll chase you up for fucking five years if you have to pay me back two grand. Hey, first of all, they might have failed on this son, but they succeeded. And raising this son. This is a good guy right here. This is a good guy. W son, W brother. I'm not gonna come to your fucking yard and, and take your shit now, man. That's fucking dad's car. I'm up his car. Abid's offer of £2,000 isn't enough to clear the. Yes, it is. Stop capping. I don't wanna hear the lies. I've watched four seasons. Five seasons, one, two, three, four seasons. It's enough. Debt. But finally, Bilal starts to make some calls to try and raise the remaining 50. Y'all just want it all right now. Where are you? Where are you? The bailiff's in my house. Finally, nearly three hours after they were called, the police arrive at the even? house. Come on. Yeah, so we're trying to sort things out, are you? Bilal's father makes immediate allegations about the agents. Okay. This gentleman, he, he used his size to force me into it. You know, we wasn't here present. Obviously, I've not seen a plane, for example, that warrants a power of entry. It's a high court rate. Yeah. Okay, I don't like it that somebody's coming to my house. I mean, the best thing I would say is try and build these guys' side, try and say that as much as possible to you. It's law enforcement. Sorry, there's not much more to do, right? It's okay. It's okay, yeah. With the agents, yeah, man, it's tough when the police come and they're like, "Nah, they they cool, they doing the right thing." Authority established. Bilal's father makes a surprise offer of fifteen hundred pounds to resolve the debt. No, no. cleared funds. That's their card. Cleared funds. One more for two thousand. One was for one thousand five hundred. Together with Abid's two thousand pound payment. The debt is finally settled. That's an ill son, man. That's that's terrible. I mean, probably life experiences. He's the older son. This this younger son had an example to look after of not what to be like. Thank you. So W brother. But before w, they son. leave, Bilal's father has one last word. <laughs> You got the phone number? Have you got his phone number? Uh, no, boy. Brother, all the best, yeah? You need anything? Just give us a call if you've got any queries, yeah? Nice, all right, bro. Five hours after they first arrived, oh, wow. the case is finally over. Five hours is incredibly long. Bro will never hear the end of this. In London, average rents are 100% higher than the rest of the UK. Londoners renting in the private sector spend... Fubs my scubs, man. Salute. Good morning. ...and on average, 60% of their income on rent. And evictions are on the rise. Clapton, East London. Clapton. High Court Enforcement Agent. They in London heavy this last four episodes. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner 
are on their way to carry out an eviction. I remember y'all used to be like, man, try that in London, try that in London. Well, listen, they pulled y'all card. They all through London getting their money. It's tough. Today we have a writ of possession. The tenant, Mr. Proctor, has lived in the flat for six years, but his tenancy expired five months ago. Turn down 64. here, I think. 64. Mr. Proctor isn't in rent arrears, but his landlord decided not to renew his lease. Look at that. Is that a there ain't nothing wrong with that. Fuck yeah. Okay. A locksmith is already at the property. Did he bring keys? Oh, that's all right. And the thing about this is, like, if I know in America, if they... If they decide not to renew your lease, they give you three months in advance. Just like when it's when it's almost three months, when it's when it's three months from your lease ending, they give you the option like, "Hey, do you want to renew or not?" And they can always also be like, "We don't want to renew." So, Mr. Proctor has already been given notice of the eviction by the county court, but the landlord has escalated the case to the high court. Today, so the agents are here time in without there. warning. Hello, Mr. Proctor. Could you open the door, please? That's it. High Court Enforcement. If you open the door, we can explain everything to you. Thank you very much. This is for you. This is from the High Court. I, I, yeah, I had an answer from the court saying... OK, what's happened is it's gone all through the County Court and the County Court have issued you a date to leave. Right. He was probably instructed possibly by the council or somebody to wait until you got the third letter. Oh, no, they're just to the date to leave, but I haven't had the date to leave. Well... Well, today is that date. <clears throat> it couldn't have gone to the high call until you ha had been instructed uh, to leave. Let me problem. show you the last letter no I've got. No problem. Can, you, oh, can I just put my shirt on? Yeah, seat? just please get dressed. Be... So all I've had... OK. Transport to the high court for enforcement, but nothing else. OK. There would be a letter prior to this saying that you had to leave the property by a certain day. No lie. These are the two best ones, like, as far as morals and heart and decision making and, and everything. But I like the combination of Delroy and Del, his son. That's not a bad combo either. Unfortunately, that you do have to leave today. Oh my God, I just... Delroy's son, like 6'5". No, that's no, right. Just, yeah. just relax, OK? Um... Don't panic, let's just explain everything to you, okay? The landlord has taken it to the high court, and with the high court, there is no notification at all, oh because God. you were already supposed to be gone. But that's not what the judge told me to do. If a county court told me to do, or the lawyer told me to do, that's not, or even my housing officer told me to do. Okay, first things first, talk to somebody, explain them that we are here now, and we're gonna give you an hour to get your personal relax, personal effects together, which you need for a day or two, and then you can make an arrangement to come back and collect everything that's yours. You can come in, it's just it's very small. It's a bit squeezed for me, I'm a bit fat for this. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a bit upset as well. Sorry. No, I'll studio apartment. We'll try and squeeze it. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Mr. Proctor is living in one tiny room. Yikes. So small. Paul has to wait downstairs. It's supposed to be a one bedroom flat and they want £1,200 a month for it. Just a... What? Oh my God. Thought I'd let you know that. The land was not the maximum amount of money that they could possibly get. Mr. Proctor claims that the landlord wants to move new tenants in and triple the rent. Triple £1,200? <laughs> It's not exactly a, well, one bedroom flat, is it? Exactly, but that's what they're told everybody is. Can you, is, is that legal? Can't you call somebody and get them like in, like in Mr. Proctor knew his landlord wanted to evict him. A housing association has offered to help him through the process. Yeah, you can help me. I'm in a complete, complete emergency. He tries to reach his support worker on the phone. The bailiffs have just turned up today and I've got a writ of possession, so I have to leave today. I need you to be with me now. 
ASAP. I really, this is really, really important. I'm, I'm standing here with the bailiff standing right in front of me. It's calm. It's calm. They hung up on you, D. Mr. Proper's phone has run out of credit. Oh my God! You lucky, you lucky. Paul and 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 Steve is in front of you. So one of them gonna let you use their phone. I'm gonna have to top the phone up. I'm sorry. No, that's. What, what else can I do? No, no, that's okay. While Steve waits, a professional actor's studio portrait catches his eye. I'm an actor. Are you famous in your acting? See with the DVD. If you go down, you see a big fat one which is kind of grey. Down, 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 down. Start, pull that out, you see me on the front cover. All oh, right. First of all, I look at my scar head, my face, and my fucking water. Uh, anyway, I've done loads of stuff since, but not to Shakespeare, though. This is a bit of friggin' tragedy today, isn't it, really? It is sad when you when you see people have like worked hard all their life and then Gradually, they're actually falling on hard times, and the consequence is that the farther they fall, the more chance is they lose the roof over their heads. Now, with credit on his phone, Mr. Proc. London is crazy. This is twelve hundred for a room. This a this is smaller than a hotel room. Like this is this is very small. Uh, tries to get hold of his support worker again. I mean, but I'm honestly, here's the thing though: if you could pay twelve, do y'all have extended stay hotels out there? He could probably go into an extended stay for for twelve hundred dollars a month, and it'd be bigger than this. Complete emergency. I have a support worker. Her phone is switched off at the moment. I don't know what to do. This is the last thing I was expecting. The, the, the last thing. This has all happened within the last half an hour. In the next few minutes, yeah? Because otherwise, okay, all right, cheers. Bye, bye. No, no she's, she's off. That's a manager of another place, you know. I'm in such a kind of mess now. I'm, you know. Get yourself together. Get a bag together of what you need. Obviously, medication, identification, because you're going to need an ID for the council. This is just like, Christ, this is a little, like a kick in the balls at the moment. This is the last thing I needed. While he packs, it becomes clear to Steve that Mr. Proctor has been living in difficult conditions. Oh my God, y'all do got roaches. Them is German cockroaches. Them is the ones we be having in the, in, out here. There's no oven. So that's why I've got my slow cooker. It's a little shower there. Not I've had a hot water for months. And, and we're still paying. Luxury, isn't it? Hopefully, from this day on, it's going to get better. Well, because you won't run out of this, will you? It's time to move out of London, man. I know he's trying to get still back into the acting thing, but like. I just need to get the locksmith to come up, um, change the locks. You all right for a few minutes? Yeah. I can't think. My brain's frustrated. I can't think what else to pack. <laughs> With the locks changed, the eviction is complete. David must now leave the room he's called home for the last six years. Sorry, what's your first name? David. David, Paul. It will be up to the council to provide emergency accommodation. But as a single man, he won't be a priority for rehousing. And uh, he'll be sleeping rough tonight, uh, maybe longer. Living conditions weren't brilliant by any means. I mean, it was a tiny little place. Barely swing a cat in there, you know. Is that a teddy bear? It's just nowhere near enough room for someone to live. I don't think so. He was probably suffering depression in there because all you could do is lay in bed. They couldn't even do the couch. Like, laying in bed all day, you will get depressed. Even if you weren't depressed before, like, you'll get depressed. Paul and Steve have faced a distressing eviction. But in Brian and Dell's next case... I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to call a removal to vehicle and I'm going to empty your hotel. What would you like to do? A debtor in denial leaves a hotel in chaos. I'm going to call a truck.
they just got us. We just watched what I, I didn't even realize what that was what we was how we started. <laughs> Last year, over 100,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales. With an average value of nearly £3,500, creditors are increasingly turning to the High Court to get their money back. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Greenwich, South East London, to collect money owed by a hotel to a catering supplies company. What have we got now, Del? We're going to KBS Bars Limited, trading as King William Hotel. The amount we're looking to collect is £6,507.79p. Okay, okay. This has been refurbed, mate. It's all freshly painted. If the owners of the hotel can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize goods to offset the value of the debt. Hi, mate. Yeah, I'm trying to find uh, King William's Hotel. We're here. Oh, is that the hotel there? Yeah, this is the hotel. Hi, I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. My name is Mr Anglin. I have a High Court writ here. Oh. Manager, so you have to come either when there's a manager here. No, I'm here now and I'm going to deal with the situation. This is not even doing it. Well, will you get the manager then, please? She's not here. She was going to call her for you, but... Well... The receptionist, Valerie, appears to be the only member of staff in the hotel. I've got a high court writ for money's owed, OK? Right. And I need to collect six and a half thousand pounds. I don't have six well, I know you don't personally, but it's not against you. They don't keep money on the premises, so... Well, they don't, they don't have to. They can sort of transfer it from one bank to another, can't they? I don't think that's going to happen. Well, no, I think it might, because if it doesn't, then we will have to go in each and every room and remove oh, goods to cover that. How many rooms are here? Uh, 20. OK. The manager? Yeah. He's not in, and then the owners are Sam and Kuma, who actually own the hotel. Can you call them? I don't have their number. Valerie rings a colleague, Maria, for help. Law enforcement here, so what do I do? Because I can't get through to Sam and because I don't know the number. Do you want me to speak to her? Yes, I'm sure. happy to. Hello? Yeah, good afternoon. Hi, are you all right? What the enforcement is for? We have a high court writ. Right, okay. Maria gives Valerie a number for Sam, one of the owners. Yeah, should I pass you over to the gentleman? Yeah. What's happening, Brian? That'll be a fix. I'm listening. Hello, who's this, please? Sam, how you doing? My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. What, who are you in connection to this business? You own it? <laughs> OK, no problem. What we need, sir, is full payment now to satisfy the High Court writ. We have to either collect full monies or enforce it, which will be removal of goods, obviously. We don't want to do that. Because I'm not going to waste my time. Because if you can't, I'm going to call a removal of the vehicle and I'm going to empty your hotel. What would you like to do? Thank you very much. <coughs> you can't pay. <coughs> I'm going to call a truck. Can you talk to him? He's on the phone. I'm not wasting any time. Brian be all straight. Be a... Brian don't give a damn. Nothing is sitting in here and play with you. It's probably hot in there, too. You know, when you bigger like that and you get hot, you get irritated. So I get it. With only... Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I got some size on me. Like, if it's hot, like, all right, bro, I'm not gonna sit in here and rebuttal everything you got to say to me. Call a truck up. Let's get it out of here. Now, Sam saying he can't pay, Brian calls for recovery vehicles. You got a whole hotel. He hopes you can't that the pay. threat Come of on, seizing man. goods will kickstart the hotel owners into paying the £6,500 debt. Well, you also mentioned to him we will be going into the guest Clean in there, too. To remove goods belonging to the hotel. If he's not going to pay. The agents have the right to take goods from all areas of the hotel, including the bedrooms, if they're unoccupied. Hello, so how are you? Very well, how are you? I would suggest you hold back on that until we've resolved the issue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a seat. Sorry. Dell advises that the guests remain in the lobby until the case is resolved. Obviously, I didn't expect this to happen. I don't think they expected it to happen, to be fair, looking at her, look on her face. 
Well, I feel sorry for the customers because it's not their business. It's Instantly, I want a free night. We ain't even gonna talk about it. Go ahead, up that free night. You know what time it is. It's not their fight. They, yeah. they, they just want a room for the night. I haven't worked all day, you know, and they've turned up, haven't paid their good money, and uh, may not get a room. Two hours after the agents first arrived, no one has turned up to help Valerie deal with the situation. But then she gets a call. Right, they said uh, somebody will be here within 50 minutes. To come and pay some money. They need to pay in full as well. Outside the hotel, the removal vehicles have now arrived. Oh, they at Brian, you, you, they actually. <laughs> the agents need to be ready to seize goods just in case the owner fails to pay the full six and a half thousand pounds. One of the items is a classic old red telephone box. What oh, is it that you just wanted to take? Telephone box. It's going to be a pain in the arse, isn't it? Yeah, of course it But it weighs a bloody ton. Um, they're going to have a look at it and see what it weighs. About eight or nine people to get that in when they were moving it from next door into here. And I've got another vehicle coming to remove any other assets, sofas and stuff like that. Fifteen minutes have now passed since the owners last called, and they still haven't arrived to make a payment. Oh, yeah, it's over. So you've been here two and a half hours? The safers, I'll move the safers. I'll do what you want, yeah? If the owners don't show up soon, they might not have a hotel to come back to. Oh, God, this is embarrassing. If I was shorty, I would need a raise. Like, give me a week paid vacation. What are you... And she right, though. I ain't stressing over this. This ain't my hotel. I work here for sure, but, like, I can't do nothing about this. Valerie talks to Sam again. It's coming with cash, is it? Okay. Right. With the promise of payment in full, Dell goes outside to put the removal on hold. Right. He reckons it's coming with cash. Let's hold it now. Fine. But hasn't the payment like increased now because the recovery vehicles are there? Finally, the owners show up. The agents have been at the hotel for nearly four hours. Now, because of extra fees, their original six and a half thousand pound debt yeah, has go. been increased by another sixteen hundred pounds. How are you? What's your name, man? Thanks for coming. Come in. Come in. Come in. It is 8116.99. Okay, Mr. Kamar, I've been here for four hours. You've got customers sitting in your reception, and we need to get it resolved and paid. I would love to get paid and leave and let your business continue. Okay? Thank you very much. Two, yeah. Three, four, five, six. With the debt now being paid in full, Dell tells Valerie that the case Valerie. has been resolved. You can deal with the guests now, if you like. Thank you, Valerie. That's fine, that's fine. Thanks for paying it. Happy days, pay cash, let's go. Yeah, all done. The collection vehicles are sent away. And Brian and Dell have got the result they needed for the claimant. I ain't gonna lie, they out here collecting in full today. day. <laughs> Generate grand. Little thousand pound bags, yeah, fifties. But that's somebody's money. You know, that could keep a business afloat, you know? Has a knock-on effect. But these people still want to sit there and figure we're out of order of what we're doing. Poor Valerie, she had to deal with us, the punters, and the bosses. I mean, that woman deserves a medal. Oh, God, she deserves a raise, man. Salute to Valerie. The total value of the buy-to-let property market in the UK is set to exceed £1 trillion in 2016. But landlords across the UK are losing £9.9 .9 in rent arrears and property damage each year. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on the road again. 
This time they're in North London to carry out another repossession. Today we're in Tottenham. We have a day outside today. They didn't want to clap them. They didn't want to, what was the first one? East London? They didn't been now they're in Tottenham. With the mandem. The repossession in Strode Road. The tenants, Anna Blashak and her family, have lived in the property for over three years. The landlord claims they owe him thousands of pounds in unpaid rent. It's quite 13. tidy, isn't it? It's like a nice little enclave. 23, yeah, 23. But the agents aren't here to collect the rent arrears. Their job is to get the tenants out today. The landlord, Mario, is waiting for them at the property. Good morning. Hello. Oh, this isn't good by the looks of it. It's not good. Oh, right. How you doing? The tenant is not happy. She doesn't want to leave. Oh, that's right. unfortunate. OK. How do you know? Did you make contact before they got there? Five minutes. Yeah. Go sit in the Mario car. has just warned his tenants they're about to be evicted. Bro, why would you do that? He's bad, then? Yeah. Are you mad? You don't, you... No, we're not mad. Who is you this? don't own the property. Yes, you just <laughs> repossessed it. Where are we meant to go? Where are we meant to go? I have a child that's four okay, months old. Okay, relax, please. Polish bad, tenants, funny, but... Claudia and her mother Anna are clearly in shock. Claudia calls her boyfriend for help. Are you coming? Say hurry up, because they came, bruv. What am I to do? What am I to fucking do? Can I hurry up then? What are he gonna do besides cause more problems? Okay, on, Just listen to As him. As Claudia has a young baby, Steve needs them to understand what they must do next. Can I explain how the system works? No, I'm putting the police on. Okay, I'll explain to you anyway. You have an hour to get your personal effects together. You can then make an arrangement and come back and collect everything else. Okay. Like? We're High Court Enforcement. High Court Enforcement. And we have a rep from the High Court. Yeah, but we didn't get nothing from the court that we did. You won't get anything from the High Court. You will only get paperwork from the council. Do you have Pardon? Lawrence. Yes. This one is for you, which enables you to... I'm not going to lie. She looks sick when that warrant came out. Take this to the council. She was, damn, the council will then help you, hopefully, with uh, housing. Yeah, but we have nowhere to go. Yeah. I was trying to explain it to you. Yeah, but you don't care. We have nowhere to go. We didn't even get a letter from the court. Some people, once we've knocked on the door and we go in and we explain to them the situation, then they say, oh, we're going to phone the police, asking them if we can be here. Well, all of that's all OK, but you need to get your stuff together because, you know, you're wasting valuable time. Claudia is trying to get the police to come and stop the eviction. Yeah, but the thing is, we have nowhere to go. We didn't even get a letter from that. We need to move out. Claudia, the police got no enforcement over them. This is from the high court. The same people that the police going to work for. They got to follow the rules. Yeah, but the thing is, I have a lot of things. I'm not going to fucking an hour. You didn't listen to me. I said, yeah, you have an hour to take your personal effects and then you can make an arrangement to come back and collect okay, everything that belongs to you. Yeah, but when I'm meant to, is that, how am I meant to do that? With, uh, I need a whole day to find that thing. The police tell Claudia the agents have a legal right to evict her. She's not even listening to the bro now. I ain't never heard nobody say like, yeah, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to call the police and really execute like she is. Today. But I'm not going, then you don't want housing. <laughs> the tenants claim they know nothing about the eviction. So Paul and Steve head out to talk to landlord Mario and his wife. It's horrible, but it's, it's, it's not personal to them. It's just that I can't afford to keep paying the mortgage without covering the bills. Simple. But then Claudia suddenly appears at the door, wanting to talk to the agents. If we're moving out today, then let him give us basically one month uh, the basic deposit to give it back. Claudia claims it's not them who owe them. Mm -mm -mm. That's not how it worked, Claudia. Money to the landlord, but the other way round. That's not how it worked, young lady. Mom said that if, if we paid him on Saturday, £200 for the house. 
Uh, sorry, no, I don't. Gone then. I don't understand what you're trying to say. What happens is now. Listen here, we pay them money on this fucking Saturday, and then we, I want it back. Simple as. With the eviction going nowhere, Paul. And she in there really thinking she calling these shots. And Steve must try. Is this how? This is this really how it be, huh? And get the tenants out before the dispute turns ugly. Don't forget her boyfriend on the way too. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner were in Tottenham, North London, to carry out an eviction. Oh, this isn't good by the looks of it. The tenant, Claudia, said she knew nothing about the eviction. Where are we meant to go? Where are we meant to go? I have a child that's four okay, months old. Okay, relax, please. Relax. The landlord claimed his tenants owed thousands of pounds in unpaid rent. I can't afford to pay me the mortgage. But Claudia had a very different version of events. Listen here, we pay them money on this fucking Saturday. And then we, I want it back. Same for us. Now Paul wants to get to the truth of the matter. They've known about the eviction since May of last year. Yeah. Have you got the Samaritans room? Because I can see this is stressing me. No, I don't. <laughs> he does, he gets me. I get very stressed. No, no, but yeah, listen, does. this story is what we hear yeah. three or four times a day. And this is and this is this is slightly worse because they're loud. Mario claims that he's been trying to get the tenants out for nine months. So what is the rent arrears then? I don't know, it's in the several thousand. Minutes later, Claudia spots her landlord waiting outside and decides to confront him. Because you're kicking uh, us out. We need the money. We paid you two days ago. But you owe in thousands. You haven't paid the rent for months. We haven't paid it. We pay it every week. Oh. Exactly. So why is he lying for now? Claudia claims that she and her mother are up to date with their rent. But despite the ongoing dispute, the High Court writ means the family the must word. leave today. And he ain't really saying nothing. Like, we paid you. He quiet. Hey. We're going to call the police now. Mama, on va dire je te vois la police. I have message, send landlord, I have money. Well, I don't get it. Uh, she pays me every week. Can I stop you? This send eviction... Money, Mario. Yeah, you sent me money on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Why you not uh, tell me I not uh, pay? Hannah, I've, how much money have I paid because you won't leave the property? Yeah? You don't understand. And every week, uh, 200 pounds. It's, it's not every week, Emma. Every week. It wasn't every yeah, week. Yeah, every no, week. It's not enough. With tempers rising, Paul advises Mario to leave the property until the tenants have gone. I've sent the landlord away. He's getting stressed anyway. He wants to be somewhere else. We've got the key. So we'll just do the normal. We'll lock them up, meet him later on and give him the keys. The agents yeah, have now been at the house anyway. for over an hour, but the tenants still seem reluctant to leave. This eviction process has actually been going on for nine months. Nine months? It yeah. started off as rent arrears, turned into an end of tenancy, because the rent arrears scenario was just never going to go anywhere. Get yourself ready, get the baby sorted, and then you can take that letter and yourself and the baby down to the council. I don't get why you come in here, yeah? Okay. And basically, I didn't even get out. Mom, just go out. Okay. Let me show you what I actually got. <clears throat> After claiming she knew nothing about the eviction, it don't even matter. Claudia fetches a letter from the county court, saying that you do know. And does it say anywhere that we need to move out at eleven o'clock? Okay. The judge here has said that it can be transferred to the high court. Now, with the high court, you don't get any notification. I know it doesn't work for you, and I get that. We don't make the rules. Okay. The reality with some of the people that we go to is that they tell us they're not going to leave. The real story is that they are going to leave. <laughs> Talk about it, Steve. My bad. Like, the way he just phrased that was cold-blooded. He said they come to us with a story that they're not going to leave. But the reality is they are going to leave. That's tough. Piece of paper. Because they are. They will leave. The family finally seem to understand that they must go. That's tough. But they still don't seem to be in any hurry. It's now 20 past 12. We've been here since 11 o'clock. No, everything can take. You're not taking everything. 
Anna has called her ex-partner to help move their belongings. How long before the car is coming? 30 minutes. No, that's not good enough. So you need to start putting stuff outside the house. I'm not finished. Nearly two hours after the agents first arrived at the house, Claudia's boyfriend and Anna's ex-partner have finally arrived to help. You understand the situation here? Yeah. Yeah. OK, fine. If you get any problems, if you photograph the sticker on the door, that's our company. So if you get any problems with getting stuff and things, yeah, just take a photograph of it. All right. As Claudia has a baby, she'll be entitled to emergency accommodation. OK. The eviction is now complete. At the end of the day, they, they understood. Yeah, she got a baby. She'd be cool. Situation. Four month old, you're getting pounced in 20 minutes. They owe £10,000 worth in rent, or between seven and £10,000 worth in rent. They'd be giving him dribs and drabs, 200 here, 200 there. You know, it's just not, it doesn't cut the mustard. Yeah, you owe me seven bands, so if you give me 200, 200, 200, like, it's still going to be adding up. What does it? Just dragging their heels for time and everything, you know. Because old money is old money, no matter the situation. Because they want to. Somebody got a boot. Of course not. True. All right. Till you leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.